you have Windows 10 and the countdown clock is ticking towards the end of Windows 10 support and you are pretty pissed. And if you're not in the market for a new computer, well, what options do you have? There are four things that are going to stop. The first is no more technical support. Look, I'm not so sure how many people actively reach out to Microsoft now for technical support instead of, I don't know, watching a YouTube video when you have any issues. So uh, that's not really a big deal. The second thing that will no longer happen is no more new features. The third thing that is going to stop is no more bug fixes. Now, one of the reasons that we have so many updates today is when new bugs are discovered, Microsoft fixes those issues and we get those Windows update. So if you have a new graphics card or you install a new program that is conflicting with something on your computer, don't expect Microsoft to fix it for you. And the fourth thing that will no longer be offered is no more security updates. After October the 14th deadline, you are left to fend for yourself against any new vulnerabilities and security issues. Yay! Look, out of all these things, the security one is the one that's most concerning, obviously. We can live without the technical support, we don't have to have new features, and whilst it's a little bit worrying that we don't get any more bug fixes, uh, we should be okay for now. But no more security is something that we need to address, and thankfully, I've got some options for you here. So we know that hackers are constantly looking for ways to break a system and exploit it. And since Windows is the most popular operating system in the world, sorry Linux people, it makes sense that Windows is their number one target. So currently, whenever a new security hole is discovered, Microsoft patches it and you get that fixed with that latest security updates. Now, for some bizarre reason, people still think today that this is just scare tactics by Microsoft Go and check out the CVE, which is the Common Vulnerabilities and Exposure Database, and you can see all these vulnerabilities for yourself. And no, that isn't written or driven by Microsoft at all. So, if you were a cyber criminal, would you launch a newly discovered attack today? Or would you wait until after the deadline, knowing that Microsoft isn't going to stop you? I think... We know the answer to that. So we don't have to wait patiently for these hacks to start happening because we have some options. And the first option is a program called the Extended Security Updates or ESU. It's a program hosted by Microsoft. That's gonna cost $30 per device for their year. So if you have a desktop and you have a laptop, it looks like you'll be in for $60. And what do you get if you join this program? Well, what you're not gonna get features, you're not gonna get new bug fixes, and you're not gonna get that technical support. But you will get critical and important security updates for another 365 days. So that is definitely one option for those who are not ready or not sure what to do and it gives you a little bit of breathing room whilst you work things out. The next option that you have is to use a third party patching tool like Zero Patch. This is a service that micro patches vulnerabilities. Unlike the usual Windows patches that fixes and modifies files on your hard drive to patch security issues, with zero patch, it works by injecting tiny little pieces of code directly into your computer's memory. The code then focuses on stopping any critical security issues. And because it goes directly into your computer's memory, it means no reboots are required. And it automatically works without you needing to do anything or install anything. But, and there is always a but, there is a price to pay for use of this service. You can sign up for the free version, which only protects you from zero day vulnerabilities. Or if you want the real protection, you're gonna to have to pay that subscription fee. This isn't sponsored or anything. I'm just gonna to link to it below so you can check it out for yourself. Okay, so we have the Microsoft $30 a year option per device. We have the zero patch option. What else have we got? Well, realistically, when you're at home, you have a router and that usually has a built in firewall. If you keep that updated, then you should be protected from almost all the incoming attacks on your network. So if I were you, I would definitely go and check your own firewall at this point and see on your router what options you have. And if your firewall is not enabled, 
absolutely enable it. I personally like the ASUS routers because of their high security focus and just like your computer's antivirus that keeps getting updated, ASUS actually partnered with Trend Micro to do the same thing and actively keep protecting your network. And no, this isn't sponsored or anything, just thought I would tell you what I use and why I like working with ASUS and why I keep testing their routers. So now that you have your firewall enabled and you're checking it and it keeps getting updated, the issue is typically not from incoming attacks onto our router, but rather um, <clears throat> a user error. So if you click on links that you shouldn't, if you download dodgy software from the web or you open a PDF from unknown senders, you are actually allowing these hackers in. And since it doesn't look like Defender will continue to work after Windows 10 ends, then you're gonna have to purchase your own antivirus. And if you keep educating yourself about scammers and hackers, say by, I don't know, watching this channel, then you should be okay because you're aware of what's going on. Now, at the risk of some people having a heart attack when I say this, I like the Intel AI PC because it has deep embedded protection built into the hardware of the device, not just the software. This means that it keeps you safer as the AI kicks in, the second that it recognizes that something is weird is going on, some anomaly is happening, it's going to block that. And again, not sponsored by Intel, but I do like their systems and I have repeatedly tested their equipment on this channel. Now, if you still don't wanna pay for anything to keep you safe and you do not wanna buy a new hardware to install Windows 11, then you do have another option, which is switching to Linux. Now, this isn't as easy and as rosy as the Linux people make it out to be in the comments, and but it certainly is an option, especially for those who just do basic things on their computer, like browsing the web, watching movies, sending emails, and the odd document and spreadsheet here and there. If that is you, then something like Mint or Zorin would probably be some great options to look at. These are free and typically you have no problem running on old hardware and they have a Windows-like interface. So getting going is pretty easy. You can also install free software for your mail and for your docs and for your spreadsheets. But, and yes, here comes another but, it isn't Windows. So don't expect for it to behave like Windows. It's a whole new operating system that you have to learn. And it's easy to get frustrated when the basic stuff just doesn't work. Personally, I love Linux for servers and for security stuff, but as a desktop, I find that for most people that do not have the time or the will to learn a new operating system, it can be really painful. I have a whole bunch of videos about switching to Linux and how you can try it before you actually make the final commitment to switch over. I'm gonna link all of these below so you can check them out. Now I will say you can of course switch to Mac, but that means buying new hardware and learning operating systems anyway. So if you're gonna do that, you might as well buy hardware and upgrade to Windows 11, no? But okay, that's up to you. Mac is certainly is an option. As always, I'm not here to convince you one way or another. I am here just laying out the facts as I have them so you can make a decision that is right for you. I'm certainly not here to defend Microsoft or attack it. Thankfully, we live in a time where we have options, and if you don't like one company, go ahead, change to another. Uh, whilst deciding what's right for you, check out these Linux videos that I have put together, and maybe it is the right moment for you, because I will suspect that I'm gonna see a lot of people going in that direction. And before you head out, just a quick favor, give the video a quick thumbs up, and I'm gonna see you in these videos. Let's go.